So, are you ready to go to work? Great, we have a busy, hardworking team, and we're glad you've decided to be a part of it. Growing crops like coffee beans, fruit, or flowers is not easy work, but it is very rewarding, as you'll soon find out. Part of that work includes being around pesticides or people who work directly with them. So before you get started, there are a few things we need to show you. Because you'll be working in areas where pesticides have been applied, your employer must provide you with this safety training. This is all part of a federal regulation called the Worker Protection Standard, or WPS. This is a rule established by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, that outlines your employer's responsibilities to you as an employee, as well as pointing out ways you can keep yourself and your coworkers safe from harmful exposure. Under this regulation, workers are defined as anyone who works in an area that has been treated with pesticides within the last 30 days. Handlers are anyone who mixes and loads, applies, or assists with the application of pesticides. Someone who cleans, handles, or adjusts parts of application equipment is also considered a handler. Handlers must be at least 18 years of age. As part of this rule, before you handle pesticides or work in areas where pesticides have been applied, your boss will provide pesticide safety training in a language that you understand. The training is required each year, and there must be a trainer or instructor present during this training to respond to any questions you have. If at any time you have concerns or questions related to understanding this information, feel free to ask the trainer immediately. After the presentation, you will be asked to sign a training record indicating that you have received the annual WPS training. In addition, it's important to remember that your employer cannot punish you for following the WPS guidelines. You cannot be threatened or intimidated for refusing to work in unsafe or unlawful circumstances or for sharing any related information with EPA, state, or tribal officials. If you want, you can designate a representative, someone you trust, to request access to specific information about pesticide applications at work. This designation must be made in writing. It's your responsibility to understand this information and to apply these safe working practices every day on the job. After all, these safety practices are to protect your health. You'll also be responsible to your fellow crew members. It's essential to know how to work in ways that keep them safe and how you can help them in case of an accident, just like they know how to help you. Let's talk about pesticides for a moment. Pesticides are chemicals used to prevent or minimize the destruction of our crops by pests. Pests can be insects, rodents, or even plant diseases or weeds, anything that can harm or destroy the crops. Pesticides come in a variety of different forms, dusts or granular formulations, liquids or aerosols. Each type has a specific purpose and a particular set of concerns. When used according to the label instructions, pesticides are relatively safe. The key phrase there is according to label instructions. Ignoring the label is illegal and potentially life-threatening. Even the smallest amounts of pesticides can make someone sick. That's why we need to understand what products are being used as well as where and when. Pesticide exposure generally happens through four main circumstances. One, through skin contact. Two, in the eyes three, in the mouth, or four, by breathing in or inhaling the particles. Skin contact with pesticides can be direct, during a spill, or by drift from a spray application. Or they can happen by indirect exposure, such as residues that have dried on a plant or a piece of equipment. One of the best ways to protect yourself from exposure through your skin is by wearing proper work clothing at all times. This includes long-sleeved shirts, long pants, socks and shoes or boots. Sometimes eye exposure happens incidentally, such as rubbing your eyes or forehead with your hands. Likewise with contact by mouth. It's critical to wash your hands before you put anything in your mouth. Food, drink, chewing gum, tobacco products, etc. It's also vital that all pesticide products are stored in their original containers with labeling in place. Leftover pesticides must never be stored in old bottles or other containers designed for food. It's illegal as well as an invitation to a potentially deadly accident. 
inhalation can happen in an instant. And we'll talk about a number of ways to prevent accidental exposure throughout this training. Your employer must provide a central location where you can get information about pesticide applications, including the products being used, the locations they're used in, as well as safety and emergency information. Labels for the pesticide products being used are kept in the central location, along with safety data sheets, or SDS, which can provide all the necessary chemical information as well as details related to emergency medical assistance. Your employer will tell you where these are kept if you need to access them during work hours. Detailed pesticide application files must be accessible here as well. You'll also find a safety poster with easy to understand information about routine and emergency decontamination. It will also include contact information for local emergency services and nearby healthcare facilities in case of a serious exposure situation. The phone number for the state or tribal agency responsible for pesticide enforcement will also be on the poster. You can use this contact number to report improper or unsafe use of pesticide products. We can't emphasize enough the importance of understanding this information. If you have trouble finding the required materials or have trouble understanding it, contact your boss with any questions you have. Pesticide labels provide first aid information, emergency contact numbers, signal words, and EPA registration numbers in addition to instructions related to the product's REI or restricted entry interval. The REI spells how much time needs to pass after an application before workers are safely permitted to go back into the treated area. Areas where an REI is in effect may be marked with signs like these. Pesticides with an REI greater than 48 hours or those requiring a dual notification, both verbal and visual, will feature a sign like this. Do not enter is a message that's simple and always needs to be taken seriously. Anytime you see a sign like this, you must obey it even if an REI has expired. Many products don't require posting, which is why it's mandatory that your employer tells you directly about an application or a treated area, while also providing complete and up-to-date application records. Not every field with pesticide residue will have a sign. So again, remember to wear proper work clothing at all times. There are a few exceptions where early entry is allowed before an REI has expired. For example, if an emergency equipment repair needs to be made, or if crop protection efforts in the face of incoming weather need to be implemented. However, required PPE or personal protective equipment must be worn. Agricultural employers are required to provide clear and specific task information to workers before directing them to perform early entry activities. Early entry workers must be at least 18 years old. Signal words on labels are a very quick and easy way to understand the hazards that a particular product presents. Caution indicates the least toxicity if inhaled or absorbed through the skin. It may also cause eye irritation. Warning suggests a moderately toxic reaction due to exposure, which could include severe eye irritation or damage, as well as harsh physical effects. Danger indicates an elevated risk of eye damage and potentially serious physical damage and illness. Danger poison is the most deadly, as indicated by the skull and crossbones image that accompanies this signal word. Any exposure to such a product should be considered the most serious, requiring immediate emergency medical care. In fact, it's important to take all information about the pesticides you see at work seriously because of product residue. Pesticide residues are not always visible, but they can still be present. They can be on plants, tractors, or other equipment, such as application or chemigation equipment. Residues can also be found in the soil, irrigation water, or even on the clothing or PPE of co-workers. Never assume any surface is free from pesticide particles. This is why you should always wash your hands, especially before eating or putting anything near your eyes or in your mouth, or even before you use the bathroom. Any product that may cause skin irritation will be unpleasant if your hands are not clean. It's also why you need to shower thoroughly with soap and water, including shampooing your hair, and put on clean clothes after your workday is done. If you can't do this at the farm, it needs to be the first thing you do when you get home. You risk exposing your clean skin to chemical residues when you put your used work clothing back on. 
Don't forget to leave work shoes or boots at the farm or outside your home before entering. Most importantly, avoid physical contact with your family members until after you've showered and put on clean clothes. Children and other family members must not come into areas that have been treated with pesticides. This is especially true for pregnant women and their unborn children. Those who are not aware of where pesticides or pesticide residues can be found are at risk for being overexposed to pesticides. Because children are developmentally more sensitive to pesticides, a child and an adult may experience the same level of exposure with the child experiencing more serious health effects. So what are some of the ways we can prevent unnecessary exposures? The most basic means of prevention for exposure is one you'll hear again and again. Wash your hands thoroughly. Use soap and water. Every job you do here carries some risk of being exposed, so wash your hands regularly and often. Keep in mind, hand sanitizers are not a substitute for washing with soap and water. And again, make sure you wash your hands before using the bathroom. Exposure to sensitive skin areas like that will be painful and can lead to serious injury. Handlers and early entry workers are also protected with the availability of PPE, or personal protective equipment. Pesticide labels will specify what PPE is required for each particular job or product. Your employer is responsible for providing, storing, and maintaining label-appropriate PPE, along with the necessary training and evaluations related to its proper use. However, PPE is not mandatory for most standard field work. Your boss is required to provide clean, well-maintained, label-mandated PPE when it's required at the farm. Whether it's REI work or part of an application process, if the product label requires it, everyone involved must be outfitted with the same PPE. For specific jobs handling pesticides or early entry work on the farm, you may be required to wear a respirator mask. Again, in response to label instructions for mixing, loading, or applying a pesticide. You will also be given specialized training if you're chosen for this work and you should never be asked to wear a respirator without these additional precautions. Anyone who wears a respirator must first pass a medical evaluation to see if they can safely do so. This entails a series of questions that a medical professional will ask you and is not necessarily a physical exam, though one may also be eventually necessary. All of these additional requirements are the responsibility of your employer. The next phase will be a respirator fit test also to be provided by your employer. This usually involves wearing the mask while being exposed to a harsh smelling mist or vapor. If the smell is detected, then the mask isn't properly fitted to the wearer. If, after several adjustments are made, the wearer still smells the vapor, then a different size mask will be required. Repeat the process until the mask fits snugly and no vapors are noticed. Then the proper fit has been achieved. Men with facial hair may not be able to get a proper seal with a respirator and will need to be clean shaven or perhaps wear an alternative respirator such as this helmet style variety. The mixing, loading and applying of pesticides requires specific knowledge and conditions related to who is permitted to do so. Workers are never permitted to mix, load or apply pesticides. If it's not your job, you need to stay clear of these products. If you have been trained as a handler and it is your job, then you need to be properly protected. Again, the pesticide label spells out clearly which PPE is necessary for that specific product or job. Employers are required to provide this PPE. And remember, the label is the law. It is your employer's responsibility to provide the PPE, as well as to instruct you on how to wear it properly and to help keep it clean and in good working condition. This is critical in keeping you and your coworkers safe at all times and your boss will give you specific instructions on how to do so. Now, you have information about pesticide applications and you have access to PPE. However, sometimes accidental exposure occurs. What should you do? Always remove any pesticide products that get on you as quickly as possible. Take off any clothing that may be contaminated, but make sure not to further contact the product while doing so. Rinse any exposed skin with water immediately and then follow up with soap and water. Shower with soap and water, including shampooing your hair, and put on clean clothes as soon as possible. If you happen to get pesticide product in your eye, make sure to wash it out with water without delay. 
If you do not have access to an eyewash station, find the nearest source of clean water, whether from a spigot, gravity-fed unit, or even a bottle of fresh water on hand. First, make sure the water is at a comfortable temperature. Be especially careful of hoses left in the sun. Then run the water directly, but gently, into the eye for at least 15 minutes, with the water running in the opposite direction of the other eye. If you're wearing contact lenses, remove and dispose of them after 5 minutes of eye washing, then continue for an additional 15 minutes. An eye wash station must have the ability to gently deliver 0.4 gallons of water per minute for 15 minutes, or a total of 6 gallons, if the pesticide label requires eye protection. In the field, at least one pint of water in a portable container must be available for each handler. You may not be feeling any illness or symptoms, but you know you've come into contact with the product. First, you must notify your supervisor immediately. Then, refer to the first aid instructions on the product label. If it's a skin exposure, it may simply require you to wash the area with soap and water. If you're working in the field, your boss will have supplies available to you, such as clean water, soap, and single-use or paper towels, within a quarter mile at all times. In case of an emergency, the nearest clean water, including springs, streams, lakes, or other sources, can also be used for decontamination if that water source is located closer to you than the employer's supplies. Never use irrigation water for rinsing off or washing, and certainly don't drink it, as it may contain pesticides or other chemicals used in the irrigation process. Maybe you're unaware of having been exposed, but you know you're feeling sick. Headache, itchy skin or eyes, nausea, excessive sweating are all signs of pesticide exposure. Talk to your boss right away if you start to experience these symptoms. Your employer is required to get you the medical attention you need and provide transportation to an emergency facility if that becomes necessary. Perhaps you find a coworker who is not feeling well or even one who's unconscious. Again, notify your boss immediately. Do not come into contact with the sick worker until you are properly protected from possible exposure. If possible, find out the name and EPA registration number for the product the worker may have been exposed to. This can be critical information to help get proper treatment. If the person is unconscious, do not try to put anything in their mouth, as this could create a choking hazard. And if they have swallowed pesticide product, unless the label says to, do not try to make them throw up. Often, the chemical elements can create greater health concerns for the individual if they are thrown back up. Always follow first aid instructions on the pesticide label. Pesticide exposure can also reveal itself in a number of different ways. Sometimes you feel the effects immediately. These are called acute effects. Delayed effects are when you have been exposed but don't feel any impact until a later time. This can be hours or days. Sensitization effects are when the pesticide needs to build up certain levels in your body before you feel their effects. And sometimes you feel effects after having been exposed over a course of many months or years. These are chronic effects and can have long-lasting impact. Sometimes when working in hot weather or in enclosed spaces such as greenhouses, you may experience heat stress. This can also happen when wearing PPE in these extreme conditions. If you're experiencing symptoms such as headache, nausea, dizziness, weakness, irritability, thirst, heavy sweating, or elevated body temperature, you may be experiencing heat stress. The best thing you can do is find a cool place to rest outside the treated area, remove excess PPE and clothing, get yourself a cold drink, and have someone sit with you until you start to feel better. Whatever the circumstances, it's essential to always know the quickest way to contact your supervisor and where you can find emergency information. Every moment counts when it comes to treating a pesticide exposure. Your supervisor is required to supply information to EMTs, nurses, doctors, or other medical professionals, such as a copy of the pesticide label, along with the EPA registration number and the SDS, as these will help in determining emergency treatment. Other ways you can avoid pesticide exposure include being aware of your location and the work situation taking place in nearby areas. Sometimes, weather or unusual conditions cause pesticide materials to land in places they're not intended to. This is called drift and can possibly expose you or others to pesticides. 
always avoid application areas as well as mist or dust clouds that may result from an application. The applicator should monitor wind or other weather conditions to minimize drift. Another way to keep you safer is with available decontamination supplies, clean water, soap, and single-use or paper towels located within a quarter mile of where field work is being conducted. Your employer is required to provide three gallons of clean water for each early entry worker. For other field work, you must have available to you one gallon of water for each worker and three gallons for each handler. These are to be used if they're closer than returning to a wash house or main building. Additionally, never take used pesticide containers home with you. No matter how often or thoroughly you may believe the jug or bottle has been rinsed out, even the smallest amount of pesticide product could make you or a loved one very sick. It's simply not worth the risk. If it's your job, make sure to understand the proper means of recycling or disposal for used pesticide containers. Once a pesticide application is completed, all equipment must be properly cleaned and stored, while all pesticides must be kept in their original containers and placed in a locked storage area where only qualified and trained handlers or applicators can access them. Pesticides must never be stored in the same area as food, feed for livestock, or PPE. When removing PPE, it's important to properly wash your gloves first and continue to wear them while all other pieces of PPE are removed. Then wash the gloves again before removing them last. Store PPE in a clean, dry place, away from extreme temperatures or chemical pesticides. Once you have finished wearing work clothes, you must wash them before wearing them again in order to prevent further exposure to pesticides or residues. If you take your work clothing home to be washed, make sure that you use the hottest water possible and that you hang the clothing outside to dry. It's best to do this immediately after removing them. The person who handles the laundry should always wear chemical-resistant gloves while handling work clothing, and work clothing should always be sorted and washed separate from other family laundry. As you can see, there's quite a bit to remember, but it all begins with common sense. Educate yourself in order to be safe and to keep your coworkers safe. Your boss must provide everything you need in order to do your job safely and to the best of your ability when it comes to pesticides. If you have questions about a job or you struggle to understand a particular situation you find yourself in, make sure to contact your trainer or another worker to help you get the information you need. If you have been designated as a handler, it's required for you to watch the additional handler presentation of WPS material. Remember, you cannot get in trouble for following WPS practices or for refusing to work in unsafe or illegal conditions. And again, you cannot be threatened or punished for sharing information about violations or unsafe conditions with EPA, state, or tribal officials. Once again, we welcome you to our farm and look forward to working side-by-side -side with you. Let's get going.